I am gonna lose my marbles. I'm gonna lose my marbles. If you have ever wondered what are the advantages and disadvantages of dieting, then listen up. My name is Colleen and I am a registered dietitian and today we're gonna go over just that. At the end of this video, you're going to have a crystal clear idea whether Googling the next diet plan that you'll try is actually a good idea or if you should run for the hills. At the end of this video, I'm also gonna share an alternative to dieting Yep, there is one. So be sure to stick around to the end to hear what that is. Now let's start off with how do you define a diet? So let's first start by getting our vocab defined. This is important to ensure that you and I are on the same page here. And really the definition of a diet listed is the kinds of foods that a person or animal or community habitually eats. So technically we all probably have diets and that's not necessarily a bad thing. People of different cultures may eat different foods and therefore have different diets, right? Or foods that they habitually eat. But that's not what we're usually talking about when we say the word diet, now is it? Mm -mm. So how do I define a diet in the sense of the word that we're going to say, you know, I'm going on a diet? I would include any eating situation in which you're making choices based solely on external reasonings and not paying attention or listening to your internal wisdom, which does include things like hunger and fullness cues, what your body is asking for, your likes and dislikes, and so on. So dieting also includes labeling foods as good or bad and labeling labeling your own worth based on your food choices, i.e. I was bad because I ate four cookies today, or basing it on your weight or your behavior. I need to burn off this pizza or today is a waste, right? So first let's talk about the advantages of dieting. So diets do serve a purpose beyond the hope of controlling your body or your weight or your health. Now diets can serve as hope that something might be different in the future. They can serve as a challenge. They can serve as a way to bond with others and form a sense of community. All of those are examples of innate things we as humans like and want. Diets can also fulfill that need, but that comes with some disadvantages. So our social media, fashion magazines, and honestly, many physicians are all saying that we need to be thinner in order to be healthier, in order to be happier, in order to be living our dream lives. And I know you might be thinking, who am I to say that there are even any disadvantages to dieting, right? And I know that going against diet culture, it can feel strange, right? It can feel weird. But the truth is that the research shows clear and distinct dangers of being on a diet. And I'm here to spread the word to you and to protect you from all of these false claims in these false hopes that these diets are giving us. Now, some of the biggest disadvantages to dieting have to do with the consequences of that rapid weight loss. So what are the disadvantages of losing weight quickly? I mean, those lose 10 pounds in a week, get picture perfect for vacation, those fast weight loss it's problematic, it's even dangerous. So let's explore that a little bit. Long-term weight gain is the biggest disadvantage of dieting. For the vast majority of people who lost weight, they're gonna regain it. And just about any diet can be sustained in the short term and you might even feel like it works, but eventually the inconveniences, the anxiety around food and eating and the impact on daily living, it takes a toll and folks, we just give up, right? Now this is not you failing at a diet. It is diet culture failing you. Dieting has other metabolic consequences which lead to weight regain as well. I have a whole video talking about metabolism that I can link. But beyond the impact of losing weight and then regaining it, let's talk about what it means to mess with your metabolism just a little bit. So you can think about your metabolism as your engine burning fuel. All of the processes of getting energy from food, building muscle, building the soldiers of your immune system, if you will. For example, those white blood cells, doling out the energy to get through the day and repairing and restoring your digestive tract at night. All of those things together are some things that compose your metabolism. So the more muscle mass that you have, the higher your metabolism revs up and burns through fuel. It's much more efficient, right? Your body does a really good job of keeping yourself alive. Now, 
Now, when food is scarce, your body slows down your metabolism, your calorie burning engine, if you will, in order to conserve fuel. Now, this would be really helpful if you were actually in a famine, but not so much if you are inflicting scarcity on yourself via a diet. Now, you can think about this kind of like your bank account, right? So things feel really affordable on payday, but the more days that pass and the more bills that get paid, the fewer dollars that you have in your bank account, right? And you really squeeze those dollars to make them last until your next payday. Bring on the PB&J, am I right? Now, the good news is that your metabolism is not set in stone. And while dieting, yes, can squelch your metabolism, you can rev it back up again with the right strategies. So again, I have those covered for you more in a whole video on how to fix a damaged, it's really an adapted metabolism. So I'll link that. On a related note, one of the reasons your metabolism slows down because of dieting is because of loss of muscle. Okay, so let's explore that a little bit more. Muscle loss is huge. You wouldn't be alone if you were to assume that all of the pounds that you lost when you weigh yourself would be fat tissue, right? But that's not really the case. Short term, you can have a change in weight due to loss of glycogen, which is essentially stored carbohydrate in your muscles. Now, glycogen is packaged, if you will, in water inside of your muscles. So as your body uses glycogen for energy, you also lose the relatively heavy water packaging. Now, this is what most folks mean by when they say losing water weight. This change on the scale is little, really has little bearing on your actual weight because it is temporary. As soon as you eat carbohydrates again and you have a glass of water, your body is probably gonna save some later and use that to rebuild those glycogen stores. And guess what? That number on the scale is going to change back. And P.S. We need glycogen, okay? It is how we fuel our muscles between meals. It's so important for so many reasons. But another body change that can happen while dieting longer term is losing actual muscle on our bodies. So if your body is under fueled, it can start to break down your muscle tissue to actually be able to provide the building blocks and energy that it needs to just get through the day. It has to pull that energy from somewhere. So if you think about it like that, your body is breaking down as a survival mechanism. Now, wouldn't it be better just to have the turkey sandwich? Now, some other biological changes, honestly, we could be here for a while if we hit on all of the ways that our body rejects the idea of dieting, but I know you have things to do. So here's just a few more important ones, okay? More fat retention, a changed body shape, more abdominal fat storage, loss of hunger, fullness, and satiety cues, like you don't know when to stop eating, actually causes a neurochemical drive to eat food, specifically carbohydrates via the increased activity of the neurochemical neuropeptide Y. It also increases premature morbidity. That got real dark real fast, guys. And finally, let's not forget our mental health through all of this. It is also mental health negatively impacted by chronic dieting. So the psychological impacts, let's hit on those a little bit because like I said, it is something to take into consideration. It does impact our health. So what is it really like to have food rules and restrictions for your brain? Well, think about when you were a kid and your parents told you that you can't have any cookies, let's say, okay? What did you suddenly want more than anything else in the whole wide world? the cookies, right? And you're probably going to want to inhale the whole box of cookies because you shouldn't have them, right? Now, by making foods off limits, they become insanely more alluring. And the more rules that you're trying to keep, the more you can spiral into that food obsession. Now, food obsession is a whole other topic. I do have a whole video on it on why you can't stop thinking about food. I'll link that for you because it goes way more detail into kind of both the psychological and biological aspects really. But not having enough fuel can make it much, much harder also for you to focus on your usual tasks. It soaks up a lot of mental energy with tallying points or servings or, you know, tracking your macros, and it can make it hard for you to enjoy social situations. So what is the point of even going to the family cookout if you're going to be worried about the food the entire time? It's exhausting. I've been there. 
And maybe you're listening to this and you're nodding along and you're wondering if I've been spying on your life. And I haven't, again, it's just because I have been there myself. But if you are watching this and you're thinking, okay, but Colleen, I'm not on the diet right now, what gives? You may not be. And if that is true for you, then yay. Live a life unburdened by food anxiety and rules. And if you're not totally sure, it is quite possible that you do have food rules, even if you are not naming them after a popular diet, such as calorie counting, Weight Watchers, or the dreaded keto diet. You might also be a pseudo dieter. And I actually have a whole video on how to know if that's the case for you. I'll link that as always guys, I'll link all the things for you. But a couple quick questions that you can ask yourself to know if you're still really kind of in that dieting mindset is do I feel guilt, stress, or anxiety when I eat foods? If the answer is yes, then you've probably still got some lingering dieting mindset going on. And you can ask yourself, do I eat in a way that makes me feel good both mentally and physically? If no, then may, like, maybe you eat past fullness or you don't honor your hunger. You've probably got some lingering dieting mindset going on there too. And lastly, do you rely on external reasons or rules to dictate your food choices? And if the answer is yes, ding, 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 diet mindset. Having a diet mentality without a specific diet named for it is really more common than you think you guys. Diet culture is so ingrained in our everyday lives. If you do think that you are dieting and you are tempted to find another diet, but you'd also really like to stop, then you're in the right place. I'm here to support you. I know from personal experience that this can feel really unsettling and it can kind of feel isolating. It goes against everything that we've thought of. What does it even mean to eat normally again, right? I always think hard situations feel a little easier when you might know what to expect. Unsettling surprises on top of hard work are a lot worse, am I right? Now, I do have a blog post that I will link for you that literally spells out what to expect when you stop dieting, so I'll link that all in the description for you. Now, if you've watched this far and I think I've gotten your attention that not dieting is serving your best life, let's cover how to actually stop dieting. So how to stop dieting. Here we go. Unlearning dieting, something that is woven throughout our daily lives. It's going to take work. It's going to take practice and steps forward as well as getting through those steps that we take backwards sometimes. And I won't pretend that it's always going to be easy or it's always going to be fun, but I can promise that food freedom feels really, really good. Well-meaning friends and family might suggest that, oh, just stop dieting, but that isn't actually helpful advice. So what does that mean? For me, when I was letting go of dieting and binge eating, I really had to work through three steps. So I'm going to give them to you straight here. So step one is to eat enough food overall. So you want to really make sure that you cover your biological needs before you get into step two, which is going to be about challenging your food rules, giving your body enough consistent energy and adequate energy and strengthening your hunger and fullness cues is really step one. And usually this looks like offering your body food consisting of all three macronutrients. So no cutting those out every roughly three to six hours maximum, because that's when our energy reserves typically run out. Now it is very, very common to be hungrier much sooner than the three hour mark, even when you stop dieting. So honor it, okay? Your body kind of has to make up for lost time. So step two is to break your food rules. After you cover the biological side of things, move on to the more psychological side. So work to improve your relationship with food, work to get comfortable eating all types of foods, and remove that good and bad label that we've been putting on food. Make peace with food. And I recommend doing this really in a stepwise process. So going at it all at once is typically too overwhelming for most people. So I want you to go grab a pen, grab a paper and write out your food rules. And then I want you to order them easiest to break to hardest to break and work on breaking them one by one. Okay. You know, a rule is broken when you no longer have guilt, stress or anxiety around the food or what that rule previously was. And you can consume it in a way that feels good, both mentally and physically. Now, step three 
is to focus on body neutrality. Now, I know this is way easier said than done, but we have to learn to see our bodies with respect and appreciation. I know the term body positivity is thrown around a lot, and to be honest with you, I prefer the term body neutrality. It's, in my opinion, not realistic to love the way that your body looks every second of the day, but you can respect and appreciate it. So those are honestly the exact first three stages of what I teach in the Society Intuitive Eating membership community. Just gave them to you right there. I have a whole five-step roadmap that I teach to help you find food freedom, to help you stop dieting, and to help you learn how to eat intuitively based not only on literally years of trial and error myself, would not want that on anyone, but also it's backed by science. Now, this same process perfected in those five stages has helped thousands of others just like you. You can do this. I'll link more info on the society in the description of this video if you would like to join us. The last two steps of that five-step roadmap, I know you're probably wondering, are incorporating gentle nutrition because yes, nutrition does matter. I am a dietitian after all. Yes, I'm an intuitive eating dietitian, but I also do believe that nutrition is very, very important and it can be approached in a non-obsessive, non-all-consuming way, okay? And then stage five is how do we keep this newfound food freedom and keep diet culture away from our lives and truly learn to foster our total health and wellness, okay? I like to think of stage five kind of like maintenance mode, okay? Now, the last tidbit of advice that I have for you is to find a new way to fulfill those advantages that we talked about earlier. Maybe you take up a new challenging hobby like knitting or maybe you create a book list to work through and ugh, you find it oh so satisfying when you cross another one off of your list. Just really find a new way to also bond with coworkers at lunch that doesn't have to do with dieting. Maybe you all start watching the same TV series and then you discuss it over lunch. Now, the opposite of dieting is intuitive eating and that's what you're going to find here on this channel. In this round, food is just food. So whether a honey crisp apple or maybe some ice cream sounds better as an afternoon snack, both are valid. You are still a good human. You're still worthy of love, respect, and affection no matter what food choices you make, okay? Intuitive eating helps you to stop dieting and to learn to eat in a way that feels good both mentally and physically. Essentially, it is that moderation, okay, that everyone is looking for. As always guys, I hope this video was helpful and it gives you a little bit more insight into the actual advantages and disadvantages of dieting. So next time you see those ads that make you feel like this next diet is going to make you sexy and rich and happy and have your celebrity crush falling out of the sky right into your arms, you know better. Be sure to give this video a like, give it a thumbs up and comment if you did enjoy it. And if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Again, you're gonna find all things intuitive eating here. Be sure also to hit the little bell to be notified when a new video is uploaded, which is every single week. So with that, I'll see you in the next one.